Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another do-it-yourself PC buyer's guide for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm gonna be showcasing my $750 budget gaming PC build for early 2021. Now, right at the outset, I should mention that there are ongoing availability issues for a number of component categories, specifically GPUs and to a lesser extent, motherboards. So I will be providing a few different options in this video. But you may actually find that your best bet is to buy a pre-built in this price range. So I will actually have a couple of options in the video description below that are pre-built PCs. I don't typically list those in a do-it-yourself buyer's guide, but because component availability is pretty limited right now, you actually might find these to be a better value and a lot easier to get your hands on. So with that said, let's jump into my component picks, starting with the CPU. Now, while AMD had the value crown for a long time, it no longer does. Intel is definitely the best way to go with a budget gaming PC with its Core i3-10100 at under $120 or the Core i5-10400 I have here at around $180. You're getting either a four core eight thread or a six core 12 thread CPU and AMD really doesn't have any competitive options here. Yes, I know about the Ryzen 5 3600, but no, it's not a good option because it's gone up in price dramatically since earlier in 2020. I'm actually shocked that AMD has done this. I think they're getting a little bit overconfident. I saw the Ryzen 5 3600 as low as $160 at one point. Now it's well over 200. It's a do not buy from my perspective. That's simply too much, particularly for a gaming PC with a $750 cap to its budget. Now, I do think the Core i5-10400 has more lag. It's a little bit more of a future-proof solution. But to keep us at that $750 price point, I do go with the 10100 And four cores and eight threads is actually perfect for most games today. Now, you will need an Intel-based motherboard. And I'm going to recommend B460 boards, micro ATX form factor, specifically for the case that I'll be going over a little bit later in this video. And I like Gigabyte a lot here for its DS3H line. You have either the base DS3H at $80 or their AC model, which adds 802.11 AC wireless networking for just another $10. So if you needed that wireless networking as an obvious buy, $10 is an absolute bargain for adding that wireless networking. I really like Gigabyte because in this bargain price point, you're gonna find a board with three slots that you can use simultaneously, which isn't actually true for most competing boards, and you also get four RAM slots, which is really good for upgrades. Now, as long as we're talking RAM, let's get into my component pick here. Either G-Skills or Patriot Vipers DDR4-2666 kits and specifically 2x8 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte. Now, I do recommend that anyone building a PC today avoid sticking with just 8 gigabytes. Do not buy a 2x4 kit. It's not sufficient for any modern gaming PC. 16 gigabytes is where you want to be. It's going to give you a lot of future proofing. And of course, you can upgrade that down the line because as I mentioned, this build has four slots and you're just using two of them at the outset. And 2666 is the right speed for this setup because the Intel CPUs are capped at that speed. But there are a lot of really slow 2666 kits that have really bad timings. The G-Skill and Patriot Viper kits that I will link down below have really tight timings, which means you'll get the maximum benefit of that speed rating. Moving on to the video card. This is the area where you're going to have the hardest time getting your pick of the best value-packed video cards of days and months past. Those are all sold out. Right now, the only thing I can actually find in stock is the RX 580 8 gigabyte, which is a great budget gaming video card, but it's a little bit more expensive than it should be right now. It's $220. Previously, it was selling for as low as $170. So there is a bit of a price increase there, which we don't like to see. Unfortunately, there is no competition. All of NVIDIA's GeForce cards are sold out. If you could find a GTX 1666 gigabyte for $220, I would take that over the RX 580. Hopefully they will restock by the time you are watching this video. And that would be my pick for this build. Now, moving on to the SSD. This is where there's plenty of value. Thank goodness there's an area where there's a component at its lowest price ever. And you're getting a PCIe drive in the 500 gigabyte size class for under $70 and often under $60. That is amazing. Again, PCIe, don't get a SATA drive at this point. They're the same price and much, much slower. I've been using the SX8200 Pro from XPG in a lot of builds. 
just because the performance is so great for the price. You can also go with some competing models from Samsung and Western Digital. I'll link them down below in case this XPG drive is not in stock when you're ready to buy. But seriously, I've seen this in stock most days for under 60 bucks on Amazon, which is an amazing value. Now, the component I'm actually most excited about in this build is sitting right next to me. So I'm gonna give you a tour of this case and then I'll get to the final steps of our build. Deepcool's new MacCube 110 Micro ATX case offers amazing features and style for its $50 price. You get this tempered glass side panel with a magnetic attachment system. It's one of the sleekest systems I've seen on any case regardless of price and requires no tools whatsoever. You can get the case in black or white and it includes one 120 millimeter fan and has mounts for up to 440 millimeter fans in the top and front of the chassis. The single included fan, however, will do a great job given how small the case is. And interestingly, the fan includes a Molex power connector in case your motherboard doesn't have a three pin header. But don't worry, the modern motherboard that I recommend for this build won't need that Molex connector. You'll just tie it away and use the three pin to power your fan. Thanks to its width, this case can fit large fans in the front plus CPU coolers up to 165 millimeters. It also includes a GPU support bracket, very unusual at this price point. Note that the rear of the case can fit two 3.5 inch drives plus two 2.5 inch drives. And the 3.5 inch drive caddy is easily removable to free up additional space for power supply cabling. Now to complete your build, you'll need two more things. First of all, a power supply. And you have to be careful here because a lot of the most respected manufacturers have had a lot of trouble keeping their availability up. And no-name brands have flooded the market, but you don't want to get a no-name PSU it's not worth the risk. Instead, go with Silverstone, which has done a great job keeping its ET550B in stock at the MSRP of just $56. You're getting 550 watts and a bronze rating. This is a totally legit power supply with headroom for a lot of upgrades down the line, including a more powerful CPU and GPU. And Silverstone has been around for many years producing power supplies and will provide great support if anything goes wrong, unlike a lot of those no-name manufacturers. Now, finally, you'll need an operating system. Of course, we go with Windows 10. The easiest thing to do is get Windows 10 on USB. It's typically around $140. If you want to save some money and are willing to jump through a few hoops to get the OS on your system, you can get the OEM version on a DVD disc. Keep in mind that the system does not have a DVD drive. You'll have to then get the ISO image directly from Microsoft, download it to a USB stick, and then load it up on your system using the license number that comes with the DVD to register it. If that sounds like too much trouble, just go for the USB version. If you wanna save the $40 versus the USB version, just be prepared to spend a little bit more time getting the OS on your system. Now, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please do post them down below. As always, I do appreciate a like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.